again, unless it's the whole point of the joke. I mean, if you're making fun of a trope, um, something that happens in a movie a lot, if you're making fun of the way a character delivered a line, or your favorite voice actor flubbed a little bit, you know, play with it then, but... Yeah, I mean, the way that GLaDOS delivers the I am a potato line is absolutely hilarious if you've never heard it. I can't do it justice as much as the voice actors does. Literally look up the uh, potato GLaDOS lines, and you'll know what I'm talking about. Do not forget the proportions of your stage. Again, we're in a relatively small room, but let's just let's pretend for a second that all we have for a stage is here between the two ends of the table. This is not going to allow us a whole lot of room to do big motions and stuff otherwise, unless of course, <laughs> unless of course we're going for a fist fight, in which case, boom, sock to the nose is pretty easy. If we have something a little bit more like to the two far ends of the room, all of a sudden we have a lot more space to do a lot more things. That's actually scary now, sort of, because the scatter might go completely around me, which would be great for a cartoon. It's not so great in real life. If you've seen movie two from which my character comes, that's why he has a bad leg. He was shot at that distance. In any case, <laughs> a little bit too in the world there. Scary. <laughs> Do not forget how big the stage is going to be, and if you don't know, maybe try to find previous uh, videos from the con, especially if it's a one that's had a skit competition going on for a long time, because the stage very rarely gets any bigger or any smaller. And that will give you kind of an idea of what you have to play with in terms of your room. If you don't know at all, you can't find any evidence, plan for a relatively small space, because then you can always make it a little bit bigger once you get there, because, oh, we have so much more to play with now. But if it is a small stage, you'll be ready for it. Practice in your kitchen. Yeah. If you got a small kitchen, congratulations. You can go way bigger. You have a small one-room apartment, you've got everything. You've got everything. You know, practice small, and then once you get into the stage and you see how big it is, go find some space on the con floor, practice with a bigger space. Uh, do not do anything in your skit that could end up in somebody being in the hospital. <laughs> I know that seems kind of obvious, but seriously, don't do that. If you want to do stage combat, you want to know how difficult this stuff is for people who are trained actors. On stage combat, they act it's actually a requirement. You have to have somebody on staff to choreograph who is a trained and licensed stage combat choreographer. It is that difficult, it is that complicated. If you're going to do big sword fights or big bar brawls, it's probably a bad idea to do that unless you have trained yourself in how to properly fall, how to properly hit somebody, and what kind of props are okay and not okay to use. If you want to do the breaking glass gag, by the way, look up sugar glass. You can make it in your own house. But watch your con rules. Our con rule here was nothing messy. Yeah, and sugar glass is incredibly sugar messy. Sugar glass is incredibly messy. See someone's head go through a pane of glass in a movie? This is probably sugar glass because it breaks everywhere. Where glass doesn't do that in shards. Yeah, nasty stuff. And practice. Again, good example. For those of you who haven't seen me walking around this weekend, this brace is made out of truck tailgate hinges and an old AFO brace. Had to fall on stage. Practice with something you're not familiar with. If it could possibly hurt you, practice a few times until you're comfortable. We were going to do a stage rehearsal, a dress rehearsal um, in costume, and I hadn't had a chance to practice with my brace yet because I had been sick. I said, give me a couple of falls before I do it because I don't know what it's going to be. You know, practice on a plush carpet and then work your way down to something like this until you get used to it. Especially with a complicated prop like that, even something like lifting the character up with someone else's help is a little bit different. She had to rehearse with Jessie two or three times to figure out how hard it was going to be to get her up off the floor after she fell. And I used to be a licensed CNA, and we both had to help elderly family. So that helps. So that helps. Going back to a previous point, college experience, high school experience, prior stage experience for that matter, is still not necessary. It helps, but you don't necessarily need it. If you've never done stage before, go ahead. This, this could be your first time. It'll actually make it a little bit more fun because you did this whole thing. It was all you. Maybe this entire thing was your first time. You can be proud of that even if you don't necessarily win anything. Doing it for the funsies and doing it for the experience 
is worth every bit of it. And don't be ashamed of yourself if you go to your local college and you get what's called a chorus member. Chorus members are those people where a uh, good example like you're watching um, Jackie Chan Rush Hour. Yes? Okay, the scene where they're walking out and they're, they're naked and you know they're covering themselves and they're running around in the seat. The people in the background walking around looking at them, talking at them, those people would be considered chorus members. Imagine that scene again, no cars, nobody in the background. How funny would that be? It's not almost, near as funny. Yeah, all of a sudden it's really empty. It's really empty. And even on stage, all those people that are only out there for the really big musical numbers when they need the entire choir doing something on stage, Imagine what those scenes would be like without those people. All of a sudden, it is a lot more empty. It's a lot less interesting. Now, granted, your eyes are drawn to the main story, the main characters, because they're the ones doing the really big actions, the really big dialogue bits, and they're the ones that cause the entire chorus to stop, look at them, and gasp whenever they say something really shocking. But those chorus members still fill a very, very crucial role. Don't be embarrassed of that kind of thing. Don't be embarrassed to put someone like that in your skit. I kind of felt that way with, with our skit. Because I come in like right at the very end, and that's basically all I do. But he was a reason to end the skit. He had a reason to be there. Again, if you've never seen Mad Max, forget the first movie. You can probably skip the third movie. I could get into a rant about that. That's another hour. But anyway. <laughs> um, we do not talk about what happens beyond Thunderdome. In any case, come talk to me about that later if you want. Seriously. Um, that was placed in the movie too. Um, he, was, he was a reason to end the skit. The angel gave me a reason to get back onto the ground. Jesse was the main reason for having the skit. You know, everyone has a role, and everything you do on stage, even if it's you're crossing your arms and you're turning your head because you're sick and tired of looking at the stupid angel. You love me. Shut up. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you know, every subtle thing you do, you know, the whole world wants to help. You're looking away from that. You're indicating your progress. Whatever. Every little thing you do is important. You're smart. You're sad. You know, you don't want to look at something. Everything. Right. Uh, for best results, especially if this is your first time doing a skit, uh, just to wrap everything up in a nice little bow. Take advantage of all the free, free, F-R-E-E, -E, free stuff that's out there, especially if you have uh, access to a computer. Audacity, like I mentioned before, free audio recording and audio editing. It's powerful enough to do everything you need and probably a couple things that you don't honestly need to do, but you might do for a future project if you need like a robot voice or something. Lightworks, if you want to do video editing, you want to throw a video into your skit, there's a wonderful program that I discovered relatively recently called Lightworks. It's almost exactly like Adobe Premiere without all the silly little bells and whistles that you only need if you're literally making a Hollywood production. Uh, if you want to throw just static images into there for whatever reason, there's a free uh, image editing software called GIMP, G-I-M-P. It stands for uh, GUI Image Manipulation Program. That is also an excellent resource and has pretty much everything that Adobe Photoshop has, again, without all the stuff that truly high-level professionals need. It'll do for your purposes just fine. Keep your concepts simple-ish. You, you always want to try to do something that's a little bit uh, different. Who was, at the, uh, who was at the panel with Samurai Dan about uh, creating a character? So the, th the thing he mentioned about uh, don't worry about being original because there is nothing original left, that's actually very true. According to what scholars you listen to, there's only really like nine or 17 different story, truly different storylines. After that, everything else is derivative of those original 17. So don't worry about doing something that's never been done before because trust me, it has. You may not know where it was done before, but it was. But the trick is to find some way to put it all together in a way that's iconic, in a way that's memorable, in a way that will stick with the audience after they're gone. The fire safety meeting, I think the uh, throwing uh, characters into a situation which should be familiar, but you never thought of it before, like again, Team Magma doing a meeting on fire safety. Using the audience as our meeting people. As our, as our meeting crew. 
that sort of thing, that sort of gag has been done on stage like a million times in different, various different scenarios. But that particular combination, magma in a fire safety meeting, how many people have done that? How many people have done that specific thing before? And those of you, and anyone who's seen it, it's probably stuck with them at least to some degree because they're like, hey, I remember that. That was actually kind of funny. That's really all you need to shoot for. You don't need to shoot for anything that's going to be like Star Wars that's going to be talked about for years and years.